Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jay Douglas. What we're going to talk about today is Major League Baseball. First round of spring training games are this weekend. The Houston Astros looking to make another appearance back in the World Series. They have dominated the Major Leagues for quite some time. I think 2017 was their first championship, and they have put two titles together since then. They have also appeared in two other World Series games in which they lost. They beat the Dodgers in 2017, lost to the Nationals in 2019, and then lost to the Braves in 2021, but then beat the Phillies last year. So two and two in World Series games. So they are definitely going to be the team to beat. I know they've lost some from those teams. You know, no Verlander anymore, no George Springer, no Carlos Correa. They still have Altuve. They still have Gurriel. So I think the Astros are certainly going to be the team to beat in the American League. The Yankees, I think, are the second best team in the American League. They got a lot of firepower. On the plate, they got to find it on the mound for the Yankees, I think, to take that next step. They got a great offense, but I think pitching has been the Yankees' undoing as of late. And of course, the Yankees have ran into the Astros' success. I want to say the Yankees have lost three or four, maybe all the times to the Astros when the Astros made the World Series. When Altuve hit the walk off home run, that was one of them. Then you had last year. Of the four championships, American League championships that the Astros have won, the Yankees have lost three of them. So the Yankees, so Altuve hit the game-winning home run in 2017 because that was seven games. And then they lost in 2019 and then 2022. So Yankees certainly got to get over that hump if they want a chance at the All Classic. And then in the National League, I think the Dodgers are the team to beat in the NL West. But I looked this up. The Phillies were the worst team that made the playoffs in the National League. They were the sixth seed, the last team to make it in, and they went all the way to October. They went all the way through the playoffs. So it can happen to anybody. Any team, when you make the playoffs in a seven-game series, any team can win, and the Phillies showed that. And then, of course, we think about a couple of years ago with the Nationals. The Nationals were, I think, only had 19 wins through – 50-something games, they made a managerial change and went all the way and hoisted the trophy. So anything can happen in the major leagues. and it's, The seasons are so long, anything can happen. But I think the Astros are the team to beat in the American League and the Dodgers are the team to beat in the National League. Although the Dodgers, when they made... They made two World... No, three World Series. No, two World Series in a row. I'm sorry. They lost to the Astros lost to the Red Sox, and then won the World Series in the COVID year. So they've made three World Series in the last five, six years. So it shows the level of success that they can withstand as well. I think they're definitely the team to beat out West in the National League. And then the Astros, the team to beat not only in the AL East, but in the American League as a whole. Now, as far as the other teams go, the Cleveland Guardians were the central champions in the American League a year ago. Seattle Mariners ended their long playoff drought last year, so we'll see if they can build on that success. They were probably the feel-good story last year. Not made the playoffs since 2001. That is now history. We'll look up who now has the longest active playoff drought. The NL East put four teams, or excuse me, put three teams in the playoffs. The Braves, Mets, and Philly, so it shows you how wide open that division is. I think it's the Braves to lose. Now, the Braves did not start off great in 2022. They had to catch fire and take over the division lead and wound up winning the division by, what, 14 games? Because I want to say the Phillies were in first place before the Braves kind of got high. And, of course, the Braves had to hold off the Mets as well. So I'd say the NL East is probably the most competitive division Although the AL East put three teams in as well, so maybe don't give that to the Yankees just yet. NL Central, I expect the Brewers to be a lot better this year, and I expect them to maybe make some noise. A team that we have not heard from since they won their World Series in 2016, Chicago Cubs. They have not been able to sustain that level of success. Traded Chris Bryant, traded Javier Baez, traded Anthony Rizzo. You know, John Lester is retired. They traded Jake Arrieta, I want to say, before that. That team, no Aradis Chapman anymore. I forgot they got rid of him, dealt him to the Yankees. So the Cubs have definitely gone on a full overhaul. 
But maybe it's time for them to reap some of the rewards in the in the NL Central and make some noise again. That's probably the biggest disappointment in recent years. That team, that Cubs team that won it in 2016, so much talent. So much talent, a great manager and Joe Madden. For them to only come away with one title, that that's a little disappointing. Now, I know we're going to get into the discussion about Clayton Kershaw. Only one championship. All the regular season accolades, Dave Roberts, the success that he's had, and they've only got one championship show for it. That could be a biggest waste of talent as well. I think the San, I think the team we need to watch out for is the San Francisco Giants. I know it's not an even year, but it wasn't too too long ago, about 10 years to the day, that they won their last championship. They won three three World Series titles in, in five years and have kind of fallen off the map a little bit. But I wouldn't be surprised if they may, may, may make some noise here in 2023. So I think the NL West, even though it's the Dodgers to lose, I think it's very competitive. The NL Central, I think, is going to be more competitive this year as well. We talked about the NL East being the most competitive division in Major League Baseball. In the AL West, even though the Mariners kind of got momentum last year. They did finish 16 games back of the Astros. So I think the Astros are definitely a team to beat there. The Central, I will say it's the Cleveland Guardians to lose. Let's take a look and see how many how many Central Division titles the the in the excuse me, the Guardians about made a slip up there. Let's see how many division titles the Guardians have won in a row in the AL Central. Because I think with the White Sox, the Twins, and the Tigers, and there's one other team in the AL Central. I really think that's the, the Guardians' division to lose. And I really don't see anybody challenging them. Their division titles, actually, that was their first division title since 2018. So I stand corrected on what I was saying about their dominance. But I, I still think that Terry Francona is a very good manager. And I think it's starting to show when he gets talent and he, he starts putting things together, he's going to get it going. And and I think the Guardians will definitely reap some of those rewards a little bit. Aaron Boone's done a great job in New York for the Yankees. I know they've come up short in the playoffs, but I still think that's their division to lose. I know the Rays and Blue Jays kind of fought, fought them last year, but I still give that one to the Yankees. It was the Royals who was the team I left out in the AL Central. If I had to give you a World Series prediction right now on February 20th, I would say the Astros win the American League. And I am going to go dark horse here in the National League and say Milwaukee Brewers. I'm going to say the Milwaukee Brewers come out of the National League. I'm going to go dark horse there. My dark horse in the American League, just judging by last year's numbers. If I want to go a team that made the postseason, I would say that the Tampa Bay Rays would be a dark horse. Now, if you want dark horse who didn't make the postseason in the American League, I'm going with the... I'm going with the Orioles or the White Sox. I'm going to go dark horse on those. And then I flip over to the National League. I already talked about the Cubs and the Giants. So those would be my two dark horses that did not make the playoffs last year that I think could maybe make the playoffs in 2023. So we'll see how it goes. Got 30-something spring training games to figure out who's got the best what. And then, of course, we throw out the official first pitch at the end of March. And I do want to say this right quick. I know I said we have 30-something games to see how good teams are in spring training. But if we went off how good teams were in preseason, NFL, NBA, the seasons would look completely different. So I know I said we have 33 spring training games and we can see who's good. But we really won't know until a third of the season is over. And 162 divided by three, I'm doing the quick math here, that's 54 games. So 54 games during the season. Once we're 54 games through, then I think we'll have a better idea of who's going to make a deep run into October and maybe play in the World Series and hopefully win.